September has come and that means another integrity XSS challenge and this time created by Ivars Vids. Let's get into it. So this challenge was another amazing one and if you have never heard of Integrity's XSS challenges then let me really quickly explain it to you. These challenges have a goal and the goal is to execute XSS on a victim. If you do so then you have a chance at winning some really really amazing swag. We're giving away 300 euros of swag so that is amazing but this challenge has just ended and now is the time for you to learn about its solution because what is the best part about not solving a challenge is that there is this write-up video where you can learn what you missed and get better at finding these esoteric XSSs. So let's do that by jumping into this challenge. So we have this challenge page here that we can visit. And if we visit this challenge page, we see that we have a astral ball here, an eight ball, and we can ask a question like, are we going to solve this challenge? If I ask that question, then we see that we have to ask again later. I'm asking again now. Oh, yeah, no. Uh, the astral ball doesn't know if we're going to solve this challenge, but I can tell you that we are going to solve this challenge. So let's get into it. First of all, I'm going to take a look at the source here because that can often hide some very interesting things. Um, and looking at the source, we see that we have a script here up top. We have a div that loads an iframe, which seems to be the ball. And then we have a script at the bottom here um, that we can take a look at. This script seems interesting. So I took that and put that into a, a little editor here so we can take a better look at it. And this script has a function button click, which if we click the button, it's going to check if there is a value in the question and to send a post message to the ball iframe with our question. Now that is interesting. We also notice that this has an asterisk here, um, meaning everything is allowed here. So post message uh, is sent to that iframe. But we also have a listener for messages, and this is for when this frame gets a message from, for example, another iframe. Uh, and, in that, and in that case, um, there is an action. It can set, delete, get, count, and the result. And then there's some setup at the bottom. Okay, that is interesting. So this will send a message to that iframe, and I suppose that iframe will, that will then return us a message. So let's take a look at that by going into this iframe here. And having a look at its body, it just has an image of ball, but in the head we have a script. And this script also seems quite interesting. Let's quickly copy that and just add that to the bottom here. A random shake function, which is going to do a post message. So this is going to do a post message, message with an action set. It's going to set the ball uh, the style of the ball to specific things. So, okay, that's how that works. We send a request to this iframe and then the iframe is going to make the ball shake by setting its styling. Uh, very peculiar. Um, but then when we're done, we're going to send a post message with, which, with result and the value is going to be uh, um, the answer of our eight ball. And that is kind of how this works. That is, that is very interesting. Let's take a quick look at the at the documentation for post message. So if I Google post message, a window dot post message like this, um, then we see that um, the post messages that we sent have a message here and then a target origin. We notice that our target origin is always an asterisk. And at the bottom here, it says that that specifies the origin of this window uh, either as uh, an asterisk indicating no preference or as a URI. What that means is that the origin is not being checked when we receive this message, so the origin can come from anywhere. That means that we can host a page and send these messages. So let's do exactly that. So I created a, an HTML page here that is going to frame our challenge. And when that has loaded, it's going to run the send message function, which is this function that I have defined here, um, which is going to get our iframe, our challenge iframe, and is then going to send post a message to that iframe so challenge.content window to get the window and then post a message and it's going to send a result uh, and this result i'm quickly going to remove this payload and set test result 
and see if that works. So, okay, that's our send message. It's gonna post a message. And okay, if we visit that page, we see that no answer gets ghosted result here. That's very peculiar uh, because it seems like this code should work, but it doesn't. And that is because this magic eight ball has this first script here. And if we go and look into this first script, so let me quickly get it to the bottom here as well. This fetches something from Cloudflare, okay. But then it does a, it sets another listener for messages and it says, well, if the source is not our ball iframe, then we're gonna stop propagation. So our second event listener for this message will not get it in that case. Uh, and that is why this is all not working out for us. Now, this is a very difficult one to bypass and um, maybe it's not even possible, but I want to assume that we are able to bypass that. And in order to work with that, to make that easier to assume, I'm going to set a burp rule. It's going to be a match and replace rule. So in the proxy under options, we can set match and replace rules. And I've set this one. So uh, if for e source not equal to, I'm going to replace that with equal to in the response body. So anytime a response body contains this, it's gonna replace that to make it a double equals. That way we bypass this little check here, uh, which makes it easier for us. So I'm gonna enable that rule. And now if I go back to my script, if I go back to my script and I reload it here, we see that our test result ends up on the page. So um, that is something that was blocking our post message. For now, we're gonna assume that we have already bypassed that. That's a problem for later. Let's continue working on this because now we could try to go into our script here and set a, a value that is a payload, like right now. So our value is a script that is gonna do an, an alert document.domain. So let's see if that works. And that doesn't work. It just says scripts alert document.domain. Um, so it just shows the text here, it removes those, uh, yeah, all of the dangerous stuff here. So this won't exactly work, um, which is totally fine, right? That is totally fine. This is uh, not really bypassable, but let's keep on looking because right now we have sent a result as a post message, but we have other stuff that we can send. And set is a very interesting one here because this will get elements and set an attribute on that element to a specific value. And we control all of that. Now, if we can set attributes, if you pay a lot of attention in our previous challenge, you may have also seen there that we um, used something called source doc on an iframe. And source doc is an attribute on an iframe. And this specific attribute will change the source of the, of the iframe. So we'll, we'll, we, you can define a string and that will become the HTML of that iframe. And well, we notice that we have an iframe here. We have this ball iframe. So what if I try to make a post message that is going to set the source doc of this ball iframe to uh, our payload? Well, let's try to do that because that shouldn't be too hard. We just need to set the action here to set. Then we need to set the element to be our um, iframe with ID ball. And then we need to set the attributes to be, sorry, to be source doc. Okay, with all of that set, let's go back to our script, reload it. Um, and now we see that our ball has disappeared. It's not a ball anymore. And if we look in inspect element here, we see that our source doc attribute has successfully been set. And if we open that up, it is now indeed our script with alert.domain. Um, but that is not going to work. And I assume, and I assume that's because we have a content security policy here. Um, so a CSP is blocking this from working because uh, it's blocking a resource um, at inline script source. Now, what is our CSP here? That's easy to check because it's just set in the meta header here. I'm just going to copy that, go into the CSP evaluator by Google and paste that in, hoping to see that it's vulnerable. Uh, but well, this says that it's all pretty much fine. Okay, that's a bummer. So we have a default source that sets some things and we have a script source with a nonce. Okay, 
a nonce. That is, well, fairly secure. We need to be able to guess this nonce in order to continue. And from what I've seen, this is not really guessable at the moment. Bummer. Well, let's just keep on looking what is happening here. So if I go and inspect this again, and in the network tab, I reload here. If I ask a question, it's gonna make a request to an API. That is interesting. Let's say I wanna, I want to go and have a closer look at this API. I would then obviously open this in a new tab and play around with it. Uh, for example, I could remove the question get parameter and whoa, in that case, we get an error. And now this is not the only way to get this error. Pretty much if you supply something invalid, this error will pop up. Uh, and that's an interesting thing to find because this error says exception question not found. Then here it has some stack trace seemingly of set question to null in its anon config with some value and then another value that starts with E Y J. Wait, E Y J, that is something I've seen before. And that is because this is very common. If you base 64 JSON, then it will always start with E Y. So that is, that is super interesting. I want to base 64 decode this and I do that in CyberChef. So I base 64 decode the specific thing and then I JSON beautify it. And we see that it contains JSON indeed, which has an astral object with some numbers and then a value called CSP. Huh, CSP. And then this value starting with 3B7. Well, let me go back here and look at the inspector. And we see that the nonce for these scripts are also 3B7. So this leaks the nonce in this error message. That is amazing for us. So, um, we have a way of kind of leaking the nonce here. Now that would obviously solve all our problems because then in our script, we could supply, well, a nonce here that would be equal to, well, what we have found. So, okay, we, we are gonna have our send message taken a nonce and that's gonna be shown added into our script that we add and that way our script bypasses the CSP because it's allowed to run. But we still need to fetch that nonce here um, and to do that, I'm just quickly going to copy and paste the function that I have. So I quickly pasted a function in here um, just to make it quicker so we don't have to write all this code. This function comes from dev www access submission. So, uh, but there's obviously many ways of doing this. This is one way of doing it. So let's dissect this function. First of all, it's gonna do a fetch of our API that is going to, well, throw that error. We're then gonna uh, get the text and match the whole error code for some regex. And this is gonna to try to find that text that starts with A, J um, to get our specific base64. It's then gonna base64 decode that and JSON parse that in order for us to get the CSP, uh, the nonce. So that's kind of what this does. Now, after it gets the nonce, I'm gonna make it call send message with our nonce. And now I'm gonna make my, my whole thing run uh, get nonce when the iframe loads. So now let's run this. And in the console, we see that undefined gets outputted. So our nonce is undefined as we can see here. That's a bummer. Why is that happening? Let's see what this whole output is then. So uh, instead of going straight in with the regex, I'm gonna console. Oh, wow, my keyboard, my hands are on the wrong side of the keyboard. Console.log, uh, the, re the results. Let's see what that shows us. And that shows us uh, the, well, the right exception. That's great. But we see that our base 64 seems to be really short. And if we look at that in CyberChef, it's just an opening and closing bracket. So just an empty array. Hmm. That is very interesting. Why is all of that happening? Well, that is obviously the next step of this challenge that we'll get into. How are we going to resolve this? Well, let's take a close look at the response for our request to our API. When we sent that from our own local host, we noticed that these are the response headers. However, when we sent that directly from uh, that request directly in our browser from the domain challenge 0922integrityio then we see that we have this header access control allow credentials true. That is interesting because that is not here when we make that same exact request. Something must be going on here. And Googling this um, header 
gives some information. So the access control allow credentials response header tells browsers whether to expose the response to the front end JavaScript code when the requests credential mode is include. Okay, so when a requests credential mode is include, browsers will only expose the response to the front end JavaScript code. And then credentials are cookies, authorization headers, or TLS client certificates. Interesting. Oh, one thing to know about this challenge is that there is a PHP session token. And this session token seems to have something to do with our, um, our nonce. So that might explain why our nonce is not there. Um, because obviously, in our case, we don't send our credentials across to the API. So it doesn't have that session token, so it cannot get the nonce. That's the ID here, at least. Now, how do we send uh, set the requests credential mode to include? Well, luckily, if we scroll down here, it explains it that if you're using fetch, you can just supply credentials include here. So let me go and do that in our script. Just like this. So will that fix everything? Well, let's find out. Let's go back to our request and reload our page. And sadly, we see that did not fix it. Okay, time to have an even closer look. And for that, I've opened up this here in Burp. And when we sent a regular request here, we see that our access control allow origin is everything. Um, and then it allows our credentials. But if we supply an origin here, where our origin is, for example, attacker.com, if I send that request, now we see that the access control allow origin is attacker.com, but we are not allowed to have those credentials. Interesting. Uh, but now if I set the origin to be challenge-0922.integrity.io, now if I send it, the access control allow origin is that domain, and our credentials, allow credentials is set to true. Now, one thing we may test is to change this to also contain attacker.com in that origin. And if I do that, we see that this is allowed and the credentials are set to true. So somewhere on the backend, it's probably checking the domain name to contain challenge-0922.integrity.io, but it forgot to check that it's really that and not something else. Because if we control the attacker.com domain, then we control all of it here. So, okay, putting all of that together, we can go to my own uh, domain here, which is the attacker.com domain that I own with that subdomain. And now let's go back over to the code. So what is happening here? Well, we're loading that iframe in the challenge. We're then getting the nonce, which we're doing here. And we're then sending a message that is going to set the source doc of an iframe there to be a script that has the nonce, and that script is going to execute parent.alert.document.domain. This parent is important, so because we're working in an iframe in an iframe, and we want to execute in the first iframe, so that parent does that. <clears throat> now, one thing to note here is that if this works, we don't have a full solution yet, because obviously in burp, we still had our proxy set up so that um, it changes a certain or it flips a certain condition to make something work. Uh, but if this works, it's already a great step towards a solution. So let's try this out. Let's reload this page. And we see that we get our majestic pop up. Uh, we have this XSS, which is a great, great first step. However, in burp, if we disable this um, match and replace, then things don't work quite so well. So that is the next step for us to figure out here. So what is this thing that is blocking us? Well, it's these couple of lines. And these lines say that um, in order for this window to receive a post message, it needs to come from the iframe with ID ball. That is what this is saying. Um, so pretty much if that is not the case then it's gonna stop propagation and it's not gonna propagate to our other message event listener. So that's what we need to bypass here. And that can be a bit tricky, but that's when you may remember or you may think of a cool trick to do with iframes. And that is the fact that we can control the location of the iframe 
on the challenge. So how does that look? Well, I wrote this function exploit that is gonna run and it's gonna, from our challenge, so that is our iframe showing our challenge, we're gonna grab the content window, then the first frame and set its location to example.com. Now, what does that look like in reality? Well, let's find out here. If I reload this page, we see that the content security blocks this, but I still wanna show this off. So I'm just gonna set another rule in Burp that is gonna remove the content security policy. So that is this rule. It's fairly simple. Uh, it uses regex because the nonce is uh, going to be anything. It just replaces all of that with nothing, removing the CSP. So now if I reload it, we will see that our little ball here becomes example.com. So we can, from our exploit page here, control the location of this specific iframe. And it has some interesting, interesting implications because this iframe that we can control, kind of, it's allowed to make our post message that we know will give us an XSS. So what did I do? Well, I created a new page called b.html. And this page is just gonna have a script that does the exact get nonce function, that does the exact send message function, or almost exact. Although this time it's gonna do a parent.post message because it's going to be the iframe in our challenge. So the parent is gonna be the challenge itself. It's gonna post to the challenge with our payload. That's kind of all this is going to do. So now we're gonna set the location of this of this iframe to that page. So let me quickly grab my domain name uh, like this and then do b.html here. So I reload that. So I reload the page here and now we see that that works, right? Why does that work? Well, this iframe is going to, or the, the ball iframe, the iframe in here is gonna be set to my page, which is going to get the nonce and which is going to send a message to the challenge iframe here, the top one, to change the source doc of this inner iframe to the exploit. So this inner iframe is gonna become two different things depending on what point in the challenge we're working. And that is kind of how that works. Now, uh, in this specific case, since I'm using HTTP, since this is all running on the local host, I had to disable something in my Firefox settings here, the security mixed content dot block active content. Um, but that is fine. The only reason I needed to do that is because I wasn't hosting this on HTTPS. Um, but okay, th this is all really cool, but sadly this stops working when we enable the CSP once again. But why? Well, let's find out. Let's take a look at the CSP. The CSP says something about the default source, about the script source, the connect source, and the object source, and the base URI. But it says nothing about the frame source. And the frame source here defines valid sources for loading frames. So since the frame source is not really supplied here anywhere, it's gonna use the default source for that. So what is allowed? Well, self is allowed, so iframes on, the, on this own origin and blob is allowed. Now, what in the world is blob? I have never heard of it. Well, the, obviously the Mozilla um, documentation talks about blobs and they say a blob object represents a blob, which is a file-like object. Um, they can be used to read as text or binary data. What, what is this thing? Apparently this is allowed. So what is going on here? Uh, you have an example here and another example at the bottom here. And if I check this live example, uh, we can open an array URL and now the URL starts with blob and then it shows some data here. This is some weird stuff that's going on, but let's play around with this um, because well, it's the only thing we have that's allowed in our frame. So I'm just gonna copy this code quickly, go into, um, into here and let's take a look at this code. So. We're gonna use url.createObjectURL of a new blob. And this new blob here is gonna take a typed array.buffer. Um, I wanna change that to a payload. So let me create a payload. And in this case, I'm just gonna say uh, subscribe as payload and then give this my payload. Now as a type, it's gonna be a MIME type. So I'm just gonna say text slash HTML here because I want this to be HTML. 
Uh, and now this is going to be a blob. So now I can set the location of that frame to a blob. And this should be allowed by the CSP because we're allowed to use blobs. Let's also console.log this blob so we can see what it looks like. Okay, back in our challenge, let's review this. So we see that this becomes a blob URL, which is allowed. We see that our ball has disappeared. Let's take a look at what is in our ball. And we see that subscribe is actually the body of um, this iframe, which is really, really cool because that's exactly what we want, right? Now we just need to put a payload into this iframe. But earlier we saw that if we could control that iframe, we, we could actually get this exercise because from that iframe, we're allowed to make post message requests to the parents, to the challenge, and that can get us an XSS. So it seems like the path is very clear here. We just need to get this payload. And in fact, we already have a payload ready, which is b.html here. So let's paste that in here. Uh, this is gonna mess up here with the script tag that needs to be uh, like that. And then we can save that and reload here. Um, but nothing is happening. Okay, let's take a look into there. Uh, it messed up somewhere. So we have our script tag here with all of our functions, but it ends abruptly here. Why does it do that? Well, because this script tag will close it. So we need to kind of obfuscate this in a way, uh, this string, which is really easy. Like I'm, I'm gonna do something very simple here. I'm just gonna do B2A to base64 encode this specific string. And then we can just in our payloads decode that from base64. And that's like a really simple, simple way of dealing with this small issue. So now I just do A to B to base64 decode that. And now normally that should work. And that kind of works. We see that uh, our, um, our nonce is received. So we make that call to the API, which shows this error. But then the result.match is null. So result.match happens here. Uh, and we see that already here it's messing about a bit with these backslashes because these backslashes actually need to be in the string. So we need to backslash these backslashes. I think that should work now. And yes, that does work. And that gives us our pop-up. So, okay, let's, let's quickly recap on what is happening here. So, we have our uh, payload here. Our payload starts with an iframe. This iframe is our specific challenge. Now, when that loads, we're gonna run our exploit. What is our exploit gonna do? It's gonna create this, this blob URL with a specific payload and it's gonna change an iframe on the challenge to that specific payload. Why do we do that? Well, that iframe has a specific property. Only that iframe is allowed to send post messages to the parent. And we need specifically that iframe to do it, so that's why we take control of that. Now, our payload is gonna do exactly that. Our payload is gonna send a post message to the parent. And this post message is going to then set the source doc of this exact same iframe that we already control uh, to a payload. But that payload is a script tag and the script tag is blocked by the CSP. It requires a nonce. Now, luckily we found that the API.php can give us an error message in specific cases, um, which exposes the uh, nonce to us. So we need to do that, but that only worked if we're using a specific origin. So for that, we needed to use our own little domain and we needed to use this credentials include. And if all those things are set straight and if you build all of those things, then and only then will you be able to get this magical pop-up. That was this challenge. Now, I absolutely loved this challenge. It featured so many things that I was really not that comfortable with. For example, uh, dealing with all that course stuff, dealing with um, the blob in this specific case and the post messages, those, those were all kind of things that I wasn't really comfortable with. Uh, and I know a lot of you guys uh, are well aware of the basic XSSs and how all of that works, but maybe all of this stuff is kind of new for you. 
Uh, if that's the case, then this will be a lot, a lot, a lot of things to learn about and to dig deeper into. So I definitely suggest that you do that. Dig deeper into uh, these blobs, into post message successes, into course issues, into CSPs. It's a whole cool world that you will definitely want to know about. We have reached the end of this video. What a long one this was once again. These exercise challenges are absolutely amazing and I love that all of you in the community love these challenges as much as I do. Now, if you like this video, if you learned something new, if you stuck to the end, then please give it a like and comment down below what you learned about, what was something that was totally new for you that you saw now, where did you get stuck and, and how could you overcome that in the future? But with that all being said, I'm going to wish you all a very, very good day and I'll see you back next month for another challenge. Take care, guys.